So let's talk about what happens if you don't pay off your tool bill. Hi guys, this is Mark. Welcome back to the truck. So let's talk about paying off your tool bill. This is going to be one of them subjects that, you know, everybody's going to have an opinion on, but really what it boils down to is if you owe money, you really need to pay it back. So let's take a look at five things that can happen if you don't pay your tool bill. So this is in no particular order. I got five listed here and a bonus one. So stay to the end and find out what the bonus one is. So the first one that if you don't pay your tool bill and you give your distributor a runaround is he's gonna repo tools. He's gonna to take stuff back. You know, a lot of guys say that, you know, he's not allowed to do that. He doesn't have the right to do that, whatever it might be. But if you owe the money and you owe the guy, if you can't pay the bill, give back the tools. It's just another way of making a payment. The sad part is you're gonna end up losing probably because he can't take the tools back as new. Most likely you used them. Now, if you didn't use it and it's just been sitting in the same box, there's a good chance you'll get your full value back. So if he has to take tools back, you know, it's not a win for anybody. You know, the, the distributor would rather be paid than to have to repo tools and then try to resell your used tools. Usually, if he breaks even, he got lucky. Another thing that could happen is being known as a thief. Nobody wants to be known as a thief. When you don't pay your tool guy, you know, it's no different than shoplifting. It's just your tool guy knows who did it. We know we have records of what you bought. We know what you bought. And if you don't pay, it's no different than if you would have came on here and stole it. It's stealing. You're being a thief. And that gets around to other guys in the shop. And then other guys in the shop get leery about leaving their boxes unlo unlocked, uh, loaning you tools, whatever it could be. This is just another way of getting a bad name for yourself. And you don't want to do that. Again, if, if you can't afford something, just talk to your distributor. Uh, it doesn't have to be bad. It just needs to be discussed. Being known as a thief, that's not a good thing. Believe it or not, the tool, deal, tool dealers, we talk. Yep, I talk to my Snap-on guy. I talk to my Cornwall girl. I talk to my other Snap-on guy. Uh, I even talk to my third Snap-on guy. I talk to all these guys, even my Maco guy that's in another area that we only cross paths a little bit. We all talk. And we all know who are good customers and who are bad customers. And if one of my guys go into their area that I don't go into, or if one of their guys comes into my area, I get a phone call sometimes and says, hey, Mark, watch out for this guy. You know, he bought some stuff from me. He doesn't pay or he's a slow pay. Keep him under control. Don't sell him a lot of stuff. You just need to know tool distributors talk. Believe it or not, we don't hate each other. We're not out to get each other. We're just out to run a business. And yes, is there a little bit of competition? Sure there is. There's a little bit of competition even between you and the shop down the street. You don't want to end up being um, put on the blacklist. It's not a good thing. Another thing that can happen is, and this has happened to me several times, I get a call from a shop owner and they say, hey Mark, Joe Blow just applied for a job. Do you know him? And I'll look at my records and I'll be like, oh yeah, I know him. He actually owes me money. Right then, that does not leave a good impression on the shop owner who might be looking to hire you. I can't tell him if he's a good tech. He might be the best tech in the world. But if he doesn't show responsibility, which is paying your tool bill, it's responsibility. If he, you don't show responsibility, that guy that might be looking to hire you could say, you know what? If he can't even pay a tool bill, we'll even show up. You know, that's something to think about. It has happened. I've had customers, shop owners call me, ask me about a guy and I'd be like, yeah, hire him in a minute. He's a great guy. You know, he always pays his bill. I don't know how good he is as a tech, but I know he's responsible. And then I've had guys go the other way and I'd be like, mm, you know, he bought some tools from me. He really hasn't paid for them. He disappeared on me. He doesn't answer any of my calls or my texts. You have to make your own decision on that, Mr. Shop Owner. It can go both ways by paying or not paying your tool bill.
another one, and a lot of uh, distributors don't do this. Some do do, do do this. There's a saying in the tool business, you know, don't chase bad money. Meaning, you know, if a guy skips on you, don't worry about it. Just keep moving to the next guy. Don't let that drag you down. That is true in some ways, but it's also not. You know, the way I look at it is, yeah, don't chase bad money, but I give the guy a chance. And then once that chance is over where he hasn't contacted me, I put him in collections. I have a really good collection agency that will uh, go after these guys. I've had guys go to court. I have all the proof I need by all the receipts that show that you had a bill and you were paying on it. And most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, I win or get a large portion of what the guy owes me. That will end up costing you more than if you would have just paid the bill. Now, I know guys, they get laid off, have a hard time getting a job. That's when you need to be most in contact with your tool distributor. Call them up, say, yeah, I haven't got a job yet. You know, um, I'm waiting for my unemployment to start, whatever it might be. Now, don't just keep leading him on thinking, you know, I'll just keep calling every couple months until he finally gets tired of it. And then, you know, the problem will go away. It won't go away because after several months, I give the guy about 60 days and then he's in collections. That's it. I used to feel really bad about putting guys in collections, but then I got to thinking, you know, I did my part. They just need to do their part. And their part is paying your bills, being responsible. When I bought the tools originally to my warehouse distributor, I had to pay them. So, you know, I had to be responsible about it. I just didn't take the tools and not pay them. So it's the same thing. It's just on a different scale. So yeah, that could be one. Make sure that you pay your tool distributor. It could keep you out of collections and go into court, which could end up costing you a lot more money down the road. This is an important one, especially guys that have extended loans for like their toolboxes or scan tool, or just they bought a lot of tools on credit. This is not truck payments. This is a credit payment where you actually sign for a loan. You need to pay that bill. If you quit, get fired, whatever it might be, that bill does not stop. You need to pay that bill or give the product back, which is a repo, I know, we don't like that word, but it is a way to help you get out of debt. This affects your credit score and this can follow you for a long time in, in, in your life. You go to buy a car or a house and they might say, well, gee, you never paid off this, this loan. And now, you know, it's, it's still here. You still need, you still owe. And they're not going to hear, well, the guy never came back. I'm not going to pay it. That, it doesn't work that way. You need to pay your bills. You need to pay off loans. Guys, thanks for stopping by. Please subscribe and have a great day.